just on our now we just on our little bushwalk but as we've left the camp there was some birds alarm calling and a lot of there's a lot of bird activity at the moment but there's a bush baby that's come out actually very early and the reason for that is because there's a snake in the tree you can probably hear all these birds alarm calling at the moment try to see if we can get it all for you there's lots happening here hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world this is so exciting <laughs> what a start but I have never seen a bush baby during the day see how the birds are chasing the little bush baby too that's quite interesting try to keep an eye on the snake now the snake is actually a female boom slung you can hear the birds it's in some thick trees at the moment Trying to find it again. Let's have a good look here. It is still there. It's very tricky to see. Can you see it, John? Right in that little clump in the tree. Um. The babblers, basically, exactly where those babblers are there, it's pretty striking. I wonder, um, from here you might be able to see, have a look around, but you see that dark little clump through those branches, that rather thick stem? Mm. That's a snake. Got it, there we go. There it is. Isn't that amazing, everyone? That's why the Aramark babblers, there was an orange breasted bush shrike, uh, uh, fork tailed drongos, uh, there's, there's a lot of birds, there were starlings also. So all these birds have come to alarm call at this, at the snake, and some of them have just come to investigate to see what the others are alarm calling at. Now, um, Brent and Jamie are back. They're gonna be on the vehicles this afternoon. Um, they've had a little bit of a break just for the week and um, preparing for our television show Sunday evening. And James will be in the tent, and myself and jean will be on bushwalk. <laughs> There's a lot going on here at the moment. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? I find it fascinating how that snake is just sitting there. It was striking at the birds earlier, but it's amazing how the birds are able to get out the way so quickly. This is very exciting. Uh, it looks like our bush babies have disappeared. Just having a look around to see, but... <laughs> is it? Can you see it? Wow. It's incredible how these birds and these babblers go and attack the snake to try and mob it, to chase it away. snake is trying its best or it's like I said it's a female worm slung she's brown in color the males are often a greenish sometimes yellow black color in certain parts of South Africa the, but this is a female quite a big female by the looks of things <laughs> this is incredible This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include...
you have to always be aware of what's around us. But the uh, boom slung is generally a very placid snake. They do try to avoid people as much as possible. And um, and if if you do come across them, they usually climb up into the tree and get out of your way. They are back fanged, which means the fangs sit right at the back of their mouth, and um, and they they have a, um, hemotoxic venom. Now hemotoxic means that basically it attacks the blood and you bleed internally from a bite of a of a boom slung but they they actually not responsible for oh there's a bush baby bush baby's back Where is it? just off to the right he's going to climb up into the tree there he goes look yeah everyone the bush baby's back wow this is amazing Look at that, jumping around. Now I'm surprised because that little bush baby will be very wary of the of the boom slung. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is really fantastic. As I said, I've never seen a bush baby during the day. big eyes scanning around now it's obviously got those big eyes because they are mainly nocturnal you see those ears they really listen out very very well they'll feed on insects but usually the sap they prefer the sap of uh, acacia trees that's what the bush babies will feed on hope you are all enjoying this as much as I am. This is really, really great. Now, uh, yesterday we had we had leopards and some elephant around with Taylor, and it just shows you there's so much going on, including these tiny creatures like snakes and bush babies, which you don't see very often, especially during the day. Just having a quick check on the snake it hasn't moved it's still curled up in the top of the branches I think we should just enjoy this bush baby for a moment maybe it jumps for us there's a beautiful gray-headed bush shrike calling you can just hear that sound that <laughs> and you say the bush baby's so fat um, Oh, do you think so, Anne? I, d <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. Maybe. I think it's fluffy and furry. One, uh, I mean, they, <laughs> they are so cute. They really, uh, that's the best way to describe them. Just cute. Look how agile it is climbing on these branches. That's a lovely view of it through there. Now, uh, Shelly, no, this is not the same thing as a lemur, not at all, they're very different. They, um, these are related to primates, they, though, they're nocturnal primates. Uh, we have the lesser bush baby, which is this one we can see, and then a greater bush baby, which is much bigger than that. Much, much bigger. Look at that, it is incredible. Not related to the lemur though. Now there are a lot of sharp thorns on this tree. It's climbing a big um, buffalo thorn, or Zizifus mocronata. These thorns don't seem to bother it. It's able to move around very, very well. Now, interesting thing is bush babies are territorial. So they will be moving around in an area that they've set up a territory in. And how they mark their territory is also quite interesting. They actually urinate on their hands. And while they're moving about, their hands will then leave the scent. And that is to mark their territory.
James Duncan, very good question. You, you asked how much does the daytime hinder their sight um, because, of, because of them being nocturnal. Now, fortunately, it's actually a very gray this afternoon so it's not too bright we've had very cloudy conditions today so i don't think it it hinders them too much in conditions like this but they they are very very careful i'm sure not to affect their eyesight too much and that's why they generally stay in dark holes in trees and that sleep there until it gets dark but i don't know if it will actually affect their eyesight very much if it is bright out i'm really not too sure The snake is still there. Alright, well this was a fantastic way to start our bushwalk.